Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. Thank you for joining me in the studio today. It's lovely to see you all again. Lots of lovely faces again as always. Welcome to the channel everybody. My name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft. And on this lovely channel we try and inspire you in some way, whether it be card making, home decor, stamps, dyes, colouring. We do our best to um, inspire you in some way so you can take it away and do as you please with it. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. This lets you know when we have videos on our channel and the bell will give you an update every time we go live. There is also a little HD button there as well which gives you a better viewing exp experience so don't forget to click that one also. So hello Elaine, Heather, Anne, Pauline, Maxine, Lisa, Angela, I can see all the lovely names popping up. Have you all been waiting for three o'clock today? The weather's not the best is it? So. What have you all been doing today then? Have you been crafting or have you might have been in the garden, some of you maybe, or have most of you been cooking and making me feel very hungry like you normally do? I sit here most times and I um, see you've all been baking scones, um, cakes and things like that. So what have you all been up to today? Let me all know, playing with the colour wheel, brilliant. That means it's pra you've been practising which is great, crafting with the stamps, baking bread, painting, no baking, need to lose weight, oh dear. I know, have your buttons started to social distance, Joe? <laughs> I did see that on social media, it did make me laugh. I hit three quiches, been to the vet, so it seems like you've all been very busy, as I have too. So I just wanted to uh, give you all a little update. I am on Create and Craft this Thursday with um, some more sales shows. So I'm not exactly sure what Create and Craft, but do um, check out the website for things going live. Um, I've no idea myself. Uh, there is two live hours on Thursday. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. As soon as I get the times through, I will let you know. Uh, so I won't be in studio on Thursday, just remember that guys, but I will be on Create and Craft, so you still do get the inspiration. And I am here with you tomorrow, because today is Tuesday. I made a phone call today to a um, customer service team about something I had an issue with and the poor lady didn't know what day it was and we were having a right giggle saying it's like Christmas, everything's just blending into one, she was saying, is it Tuesday, is it Wednesday, it should be with you Friday. I was <laughs> just having a laugh with this lovely lady. So I think we're all feeling it, aren't we? So well done if you are staying safe and if you have issues, particularly health issues, uh, please do as you're told and stay safe and let somebody else go out and do your shopping and the bits and bobs that you maybe might have taken for granted. Let somebody else do it for a change for you. It's not for um, forever, it's just for a little short period. We'd rather you be here than not be here. So please do stay safe. You are part of the Stamps By Me family now. So if anybody's missing, we usually do spot when somebody is missing or if somebody's been poorly. We usually notice a little bit of a pattern, so we know where you live and we will come and find you. So, hi Aaron, welcome to the lovely Stamps By Me family. Um, Aaron is new to the page as well also, so welcome Aaron. Jan, hi Jan, Amanda, Janet, Helen, welcome everybody. So let's do what we've come to do and do some crafting. A little bit of things that I just want to go through. So yesterday, if you watched the show, you will have seen that we launched our fabulous next stamp in the Academy and it was this one here. So um, the large blossom, I'll just show you it here. Um, you can see it's huge. It is really, really big, isn't it? <laughs> but again, you can snip into them as always from Stamps By Me. And I'm just going to show you some fabulous samples, quickly go through them. If you saw them yesterday, I do apologise if, if I'm showing you um, repeats and things like that. But I do believe some people didn't get to watch the show yesterday. And we might have some new viewers as we always do on the channel. So this one's white embossed and coloured in metallic paint. And we have a bit of a background going on. So if you do want to get involved in Craft Academy, all you need to do is go to FBL on our website, which is www.stampsbyme.co.uk and pop FBL into the search engine and that will take you to all the Craft Academy stamps that we have. So even if we've got older ones on there, you still haven't missed um, getting involved. The videos are on YouTube and will stay there. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through the remaining, remaining ones of these lovely samples here 
I have had some more ideas on this one. I was sat on the couch last night thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that. So what I'm going to do is, whew, when we come to do this one, I'm going to maybe not do the ones that we've got in here. If, if somebody has a personal favourite and would like to do it in studio, you must let me know. But I have some ideas about this one. And then just a uh, dry brush technique on there for you. So some nice little samples there. Maybe something that you wouldn't normally try, which is good. So if we can encourage you to try something different, you never know, you might like it. So just set those aside. And then the three, this is the one that we're working on today. So we have um, this lovely thank you one, which has the beautiful large floral set in the background there. So you can see lots of open spaces. And this is the one we worked on yesterday and we're gonna work on it today and we're gonna work on it tomorrow. So that's that one. And the two previous ones are these lovely ones here, the uh, My Adventure and Smile. And I'll just turn them over for you there. Now we can see, Ooh, sorry, it's total opposite on camera, there we go. So you can see they're really, really cool and quirky stamped and a lot of you have been making makes with those, so well done. You can go back and get those if you do like any of them, but as always, if you are tuning in and budget doesn't quite stretch or um, you know, you're new to crafting and you don't want to buy everything, that's absolutely fine. Just get the inspiration and use what you've got in your stash. Let's have a look. So... I think everybody's good to go. Did you enjoy yesterday's studio? Because I felt it was a really good studio yesterday, despite my son getting up and down, up and down. Yeah, it was a good studio. So in today's studio, we are going to use a lovely um, large stamp. But what we are going to do today is I'm going to make the stamp um, not the focal point, if that makes sense. So if you are crafting along, please let me know. So the stamp is not going to be the focal point. We're going to make some words the focal point on this one. And I'm going to show you how maybe to chop it up a little bit and sometimes push your artwork into the background and make the words the focal point on the front of your card. So let's have a look. Hi, Pat, Marilyn, Maxine, Doreen. Pat, we've just sent your lovely order, sweetheart. There are lots of orders gone out of the door today. Just one thing I do need to tell you about is due to um, the Stamps By Me family growing as fast as it is, as you can see, we're getting more and more numbers every time, which means more people are buying our products, which is fabulous. What I will say to you though, is we are getting lots of emails. And we, as you all know, we deal with every single email. We never ignore an email, good or bad, it always gets answered. However, the increase in emails has just gone <sighs> as you can imagine. So, and it's taking some time to get through. We're still not um, back to full capacity with staff. We haven't got all staff back in the building. We are sort of like phasing people back into the building. So we're still not at full strength at the moment. So Tim is having to still do everything, including me, still do everything. So all I ask is that you are just a little bit patient with your emails. Um, and we will, we will promise we will answer those emails for you. They will not get ignored. They might take a little bit longer than normal, but we will answer every single email. So let's have a look at it. Right, I do the busy one you made, which is this one, is it sweetheart? This one here? You'll have to let me know, Doreen, if it's this one. And then if you want to do that one, sweetheart, we will revisit it. Maybe we'll do it in different colours. Okay, so let's craft. So I have a piece of watercolour cardstock here. I'll just tell you the size if you are crafting along. I'll just move my coffee. So if you are crafting along, again, don't have to be exactly the same size it's just a rough so 20 tall 20 centimeters tall and about just over 14 so say 14 wide so 14 centimeters wide by 20 tall so the busy one I'm getting a few for that one okay we might have a look at that one tomorrow if you want and I'll show you how we make it a little bit arty um, okay so 20 by 14 what I did forget to tell you all about is just a little funny story before we actually get into craft and I not want to keep you all, but it is nice to have an afternoon together, I guess. So about a week ago, I um, leant down here like, so as you all know, my cardstock is under my um, cabinet here and my glue was here, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you know how I got all my um, artwork stuck in my hair the other day? Well, this is another story for you. So I went down like so to grab some cardstock under there and do you know the end of the glue? It went straight up my nose. 
it brought water to my eyes and everything. I had to cover my eyes for ages because I thought I was going to have a nosebleed. <laughs> Went over and the glue it straight on my nose. Tim's like, what are you doing? You are crazy. I'm like, I didn't even see the glue smack bang in front of me. Cause, could you imagine if I'd have had a big nosebleed? All because of some blooming glue. But anyway, I thought I'd tell you all about it because we do have mishaps in the craft room. <laughs> so let's crack on with craft. So first of all, we're going to need our Eureka and we're going to need our stamp. Now, if you haven't got this stamp, you are going to need an alternative. Now, maybe have a think about some background stamps you've got in your stash if you haven't got this one. It wasn't funny at the time. I literally did think I'd bust my nose. But um, looking back, it is quite a funny story, isn't it? They won't be doing that one again. I'm glad I'm not the only clumsy one, Tina. I know. <laughs> crazy hey so I'm going to use the stamp as an entity a full entity so I'm going to place it across the base of my uh, watercolor card here now if you haven't got watercolor card normal card will suffice you will get a different look a little bit of texture maybe but it st will still work okay so we're going to heat emboss in white okay so let's get the appropriate equipment. So you're going to need a sticky ink pad, guys. We're going to need some white embossing powder and you're going to need an empty static bag. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to anti static the whole piece of this watercolour card. Now, you're probably thinking, come on, Tony, this is predictable. We've done this a few times before and we have done this a few times before. But as you all know, for Craft Academy, I have stated many times that I don't want you to have to think you've got to go out and buy all the stuff. What I'm trying to do is maybe educate you on that. The stuff that you have in your stash, you, could, you, you can use in so many different ways. OK, so maybe pushing backgrounds backwards and pulling sentiments forward, texture. You know, you can get some great looking cards with minimum supplies. So... We're going to ink this one up with the sticky ink pad. I'm just going to um, stamp this one out first of all. What I am going to do is I am going to do it twice, okay? And the reason I'm doing it twice is because the watercolour card is a little bit texturised and I want to get all that detail in that texture. Just move out there for you. There we go. So the card size is 20 centimetres tall by 14 wide, or just over 14. So I've done it once, and I can see it's actually stamped OK, but just because I really do want it to pick up all that detail, I'm going to do it for the second time. Good old push down, try and get all that detail if you can. And listen, if you don't get all the detail, it's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world, don't worry about it. So there we go. So I'm just going to take that out of my Eureka. I'm just going to grab some paper, if some scrap paper, hopefully. There we go. So I'm just going to pop some white embossing powder on here. just looking at the one of the cards I've got on the back there where I've used white embossing powder we're not doing the same technique today but I'll show you in a second what it looks like if you do it in white embossing and just color it with your lovely watercolors so they can I don't know the camera pick it up just there there we go so I'm going to heat set this one you won't see it until we start to do the lovely techniques on there so let's just pop this back in our container not to waste any Drink. Thank you, Leslie. So let's just remove the stamp from here, pop it back on our carrier sheet. We'll just move this out of the way for now. So hit get your gun hot. So 
So the card that I was um, just showing you, or I was going to show you, is this one here. I'll just show you on the front. So that one was white embossed, then fussy cut and matte and layered back onto some white. But it just shows if you just want a colour and add some splashes, you can get some really beautiful cards. You don't have to think, do you know what, I really need to be arty and I really need to do better. And because even with the simplest of techniques, the cards are really beautiful. So my gun is hot, so I'm just going to pull my card a little bit, give me a little bit of... And then I'm just going to pop it on here and I'm just going to seal that embossing powder with the heat. Now, you probably cannot see it and will not see it until we start to do our lovely technique. So as the powder starts to change, just follow the powder, don't overheat, it'll tarnish. There we go. So I'm not sure if the camera will pick out, but I'm happy to hold it to the front to see if we can. So the detail is there and it will come to, there we go, it will come to fruition as soon as we start to layer some colour on there. What time does class finish? <laughs> we should get a bell, shouldn't we? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my Eureka again. I'm just going to use the top of my Eureka as a station. I'm just going to brush all that anti-static powder off there now. We don't need it. Just use a tissue or whatever your hand. And then it, this is where we're going to have a bit of fun. But what we're going to do is rather than just uh, one layer of texture, we're going to do two, but with two different mediums. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I have my water-based inks. Now, if you don't have these, watercolour pens, pencils, um, other ink pads, generation inks work absolutely beautifully. Um, so dig out what you've got in your stash. So first of all, I'm going to use some pretty colours. So I'm going to use the purple... I've got white, wilted violet, one lipstick, and I think we'll just go with those two for now. Maybe let's go with a little bit of green, crushed olive. So again, I'm just going to pop some on my mat here. You've seen us do this technique several times before. So a little bit of purple on there, and then I'm just going to grab my spray bottle. So just spray the ink on there. I'm making it quite watery because I want it to be quite pale. So your first layer needs to be pale. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip the cardstock into the, into the colour. Can we see that there? Just pale. And what I'll do is it'll pick up all that lovely detail. Let's get it covered, the whole of the image. So you're going for a pale colour. You're not going for bright, okay? So it seems a shame to waste that colour. So I'm just picking up that colour there and hopefully you'll be able to see from the front there it started to pick up that detail. Can we see there? It's very, very pale and I want it to be pale, okay? So let's just heat set that one. The great thing about layer building is if you start off really light, you can always build on it. It's just a little bit difficult to try and then pull it back if you go too dark. So go light, as light as you dare, and then build on it. But if you're colouring direct, I always tell you to go as dark as you dare because it does dry back to light, two shades lighter. So remember that one too. So we've got a lovely layer of purple on there. Let's just clean the top of my Eureka here. So let's go for warm lipstick this time. So I'm just putting a couple of spots in some circular motion on the top of my lid here. And, I, oop, and again, I'm just going to spray with some water. And then we'll just put our image into it again. And this time we get some like coral on there. Can you see that there? 
see it's just picking up beautifully and you'll see why in a second I want it to be quite light and I always say um, dry between your layers try not to um, do them all at once because you could end up with a muddy mess So I'm trying to get in at least some of the detail, but I want it to be pale. Right, let's go with that. Let's dry that one off. Let's get this dry. So that's pretty much okay. So let's just clean that one off our lid this time. Let's move on to the green. Now you can use a multitude of colours, you don't have to restrict yourself to one or two colours, just try and stick to colours that are going to work though, um, together, okay? So try, if you're uncertain, um, what I would say is do a, a swatch on a piece of card before you um, start on your main card, on your main image. So I'm keeping the greeny colour down the base here where it is predominantly leaves. I'm not going too much near the florals, but I am not bothered if it does hit the florals, but I am trying to stay within the leaves, if that makes any sense. So we can see you've got the lovely, can we see it coming together? You can just see some of the detail there, okay? It's picking that detail up lovely. So let's just dry this one off. you can see um, because my gun's warm I'm getting less warp in my card can we see there it's not it's not what it is going to warp it's inevitable all card is going to warp whether it be watercolor card or not but because we have got our gun hot before we've applied it to the card stock um, you're going to get less warp okay so that's not bad is it it's, it's watercolor card as well because sometimes the card is just going to look like a wave, doesn't it? So just bear that in mind. Less time on your card means less warp in your card. When I've embossed, does it not go funny? No, it just resists. So what happens is it's basically melted plastic on your card. And anything that's um, got any moisture in it, it just pushes it away. And that's why um, heat embossing is fabulous for your resisting techniques because it doesn't like anything sitting on top of it, Doreen. So I hope that he that's helped you there. Let's just... Um, yeah, it's, it is in a sense smooching, yeah. I like the smooching with the acetate though. I get better result when I use the um, acetate. So there we go, we've got a relatively light background on there. So to bring it together further, what we're gonna do is the three colors that we've already used, we're just gonna blend some color on top now. And this is where your image becomes textured and smooth and then clean. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to take the lovely pink that we've used. And I'm just going to use a blending brush. Just get a piece of scrap card. So this is where now, just make sure my brush is clean. This is where now we are able to just get some colour into the flowers and what will happen is you'll get the colour in the flowers but you'll have all that texture in the background people will wonder why how you've done that so I'm just gonna smooch some colour is that a right word smooch into those flowers just to highlight them a bit better so you can see now that flowers come to life can you see that there so let's do that one and then we'll do this one here but we're just staying within the flower. Don't stress yourself out if you don't keep within the flower. If you're a bit of an OCD crafter, this technique might not be for you. But I do encourage you to try it because you might like it. 
So we've done the two flowers there in the pinks, haven't we? So just make them a little bit brighter. And what happens is, although we've put the colour in there, you still get that beautiful texture showing through. So that's that one. Let's swap it out for the purple. Because we've got two flowers at the top, which we can just add the purple in there. And just get picking up that one in the top right here. Come see there. So I've picked up that one there. Just put a bit more on so you can see. I can never tell if you can see or not. Um, because I'm under so much light in here. So I'm just going to pick up this top one. So there you can, let's just get a bit more further down. Don't be scared of it, it really doesn't bite. <laughs> and then let's get some green into the base of these flowers here. These are just normal distress inks, but you can use your generation inks, you can use distress oxide too, they would work as well. So I'm just going to use this green here to pick up the green parts with mist. And then, once you've got that lovely lay down of colour, if when you pop it down, you find like your white embossing is going a little bit like the colour of the ink pad, just get some tissue and just burnish it. Just give it a rub with a tissue and then all the lovely white embossing powder comes back. So what you end up with then is something that looks quite pretty. I'll show you here. Can you see that there? So layered effect but two different techniques. So let's build on this one further. Adele, that's very right. Um, Adele just pointed out the distress inks are in black cases and the oxides are in grey. Can we see that there? Black and grey. Just food for thought, albeit you will pick up the wrong ones often like I do. So let's take our card to the next stage. Now, for this next stage, you are going to need some pencils or pens. They don't have to be my pencils or pens, but I'm going to use my watercolour pencils. But if you've got... And they don't have to be watercolour pencils if you don't want them to be. But any pencils or watercolour pens, or if you've got your Derwents, we've all got our Derwents, we love our Derwent pencils. Um, if you've got those. But I'm going to use my um, Himmy ones. Today, dug out of a box, can't believe it, I found them. So um, I'm just going to use some of the colours from here, but you use what you've got in your stash. I do want to show you something interesting, what I have been doing today though. You know how I encourage you all to do a swatch, I've done this today. So this is just one of those inexpensive sketchbooks, Winsor Newton, can you see that there? I think it was about £8 or something, and it's got lots of white pages in. But what I've done is I've started myself a swatch look. Um, rather than bits of paper stuck on my wall with tape. I've started this little swatch, so I've gone through all the colours today and I've matted them in here. And what I'm going to do is my pens, pencils are coded. I've coded them myself and I'm going to put the code on each one. So if you have some pens or pencils in your stash, um, maybe it's something that you might want to do, pop them in a book like this, because look what I did here was. On the back here, I have all the rest of the pencils, so it shows me every colour because sometimes they're not true to colour on the pencil, so we do need to do a swatch. And then I was uh, got carried away with myself, and these are the Distress Crayons. So I did myself a swatch for my Distress Crayons, and I am, time permitting, I'm going to work myself through my book with all the pens and pencils that I have in my stash, and then I can just quickly grab my black book for reference and um, just check a swatch. So I think that's a good idea, and I think if you have all the kit at home, i.e. pens, pencils and things like that, do yourself a good swatch, and it's a great reference, if you have the time, that is. But I've had so much fun doing that one today, um, because literally I have boards all over, and as you know, I can't find anything at the moment, so I spent a bit of time for myself today doing that. So what I'm going to do now is, in keeping with our lovely colour theme, so remember we've done purple, we've done a, like a rosy pinky red and some greens, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to highlight the image. So I'm just going to take some of my pencils. Now these are the watercolour pencils, so if I put the colour on, I can drag it out further with my watercolour brush if I want to. Or you can just add detail with the pencil 
and not drag it out. So let's just highlight this one flower. I'm not going to colour the whole image, but I'm just going to show you if you highlight some of the areas, how the image pops further. And you can add water to enhance it if you want to. So I'm just laying a little bit of colour down because these are really pigmented and I don't need a lot. So I'm just putting a little bit on each petal. And we'll just go up the lines there because... So I'm going to use this shade and then I might add a little bit of orange. So I'm not colouring, I'm not trying to be light and shade, I'm just adding some colour to the whole flower. So that's that flower. So it instantly brings your work to life. So let's do another shade of... Let's swap it out for another one for this one. So again, I'm not putting lots of colour down. I'm just adding a little bit of colour to the base because as soon as I add the water, they're really pigmented. If you have these pencils, I still have some Gaelic pencils I bought at a visitor museum. I am betting you, Joanne, more than anything, they still work. Gaelic are fabulous, fabulous. So get them out. My sketchbook, I think I got it from um, the range. Inexpensive, really inexpensive, it was from the range. The, yeah, if you've got your watercolour wheel, that will work for this technique. You're just going to put colour on top of colour. Okay, it's just that today I've managed to have 10 minutes to myself um, and I've managed to start going through my boxes and guess what was at the top of my box? My lovely watercolour pencils. It was like, oh, I've died and gone to heaven. Um, so guess what? It was inevitable they were going to be in the studio today because I haven't touched them for such a long time. So we've done this one and this one. So let's do these purple ones. I'm going to do them in two shades of purple. So again, I'm just, I need a bit darker than that one. Nope, still not quite dark enough. See, this is where I need my colour swatch, but I'm not going to lean down and get it. <laughs> so let's try this one. That's better. So I'm just adding the colour, laying it flat at the base of every petal. And I'm just going to, once I've got the colour down, you'll see how quick we are able to drag this lovely colour out. So I'm not trying to be an artist in any way. I'm just laying a little bit of colour down. And you'll see them come to life as soon as we add the water. But you can do this with your pens. So if you've got our watercolour pens, you can do it with that too. Or if you've got somebody else's watercolour pens, that's fine too. They'll work. So I'm just going to add some green. That's the wrong colour green. Let's have a look. So I need a greeny yellow, a lime greeny yellow. Let's go with, let's go with you. That's better. You're not going to see this till I add the water. So in, it is a case now. So with, this is our third layer, remember? So this is sort of like giving it the dimension with little to no effort. So I'm just going to go with this colour green down here. Nothing fancy. And you don't have to colour it all if you don't want to. I'm sorry I'm enjoying myself here. Is there any questions? Yeah, they go even more vibrant when added water. The, I have the Derwents and I absolutely adore them. I never criticise Derwent. I've got probably most of their products in my craft stash. I love them. But when we went to Germany and spoke to this company, I was, I love a good challenge. And having known and having got the Derwents, I just knew that probably there's nothing on the market that's going to compare. But I did feel these were just as good. So these really do work beautifully in your crafting as well so but if you have the Derwent you don't need these they are the same don't buy both so there we go so we've got our little bit of colour down there so let's pop that green back so let's I'm going to leave those out for a second because I'm going to show you a little bit of a technique too so I'm just going to grab my watercolour brush now and let's just drag some of this colour out so as soon as you hit it with your brush I don't know if you can see that. Can we get a close-up, please? I'll not do it until we can all see what I'm doing. It would help. Thank you. 
Thank you. So all you do is you just add your water to the colour and it just drags out beautifully. The colour just a little goes such a long way. So please do not pop lots of colour on there. You really don't need it. If you get the colour onto your white embossing, don't worry about it. It will burnish off like I showed you. So literally I'm just going over those areas where I've popped that colour and just making it pop. So I go into those little crevices there. So can we see the difference here to here? So if you fill in all the areas, I haven't filled in all the areas because I don't want you to sit and have to watch me colour. So let's do this one here. I like the lines in there if you don't continue to blend with your brush. You can do this with your pens as well if you've got your watercolour pens. Lay that initial colour down and then just drag it out with your brush. Thank you. So I'm just dragging all of those lines out there. I haven't put any colour on the centre but I'm just going to drag some of that colour over just to get a bit of coverage on there. Now, oh, nearly in my coffee, did you see that? Crazy, hey? I'm just going to drag this purple out a little bit. Cheers. Thank you. And then maybe a little bit of the green, not too much though. cover the whole of that area and obviously the more colour you put down the darker it's going to be always go light though guys so there we go I'm happy with that one so what I am going to do is just add some I was going to add some splashes, but I think that's going to be enough, don't you? So let's just dry this off with our gun, and then I'm just going to show you one little technique to make your artwork pop. Remember what I said at the beginning of the show, though. Please, okay, so the sketchbook I think I got from the range. Pretty inexpensive. I think it was about eight, ten pounds, something like that. It's got lots of pages in there, so you'll be able to do lots of swatches for all the, all the bits of kit that you've been buying. So remember what I said initially, the image on this stamp today, we are pushing right back. It's not going to be the focal point. So you can see it's going to be difficult to push that back in. It's super bright and it's beautiful. So we're going to have some pain on trying to push that back, but we are going to push it back and I'll show you how in a second. One thing I do want to show you is a great technique. So to make this look 3D but completely flat, a great technique then is if you grab a dark coloured pencil like a black or a dark grey or something, in fact I won't go as dark as black because it might um, frighten, frighten you at home, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop an outline, in fact I will go dark because it will show better on telly. So what I'm going to do is I've just got my black pencil here and I'm just going to pencil an outline around this image. So, can we see that there? So it's creating like a shadow. So I'm not putting lots of colour down, I'm doing it very subtly, but I'm just outlining that water, that heat embossed image, so you can see my head now. And you're probably thinking, oh, she's ruined it now. But watch what happens when we drag it out with a little bit of water. Now I'm not putting a lot down because it's a dark pencil, okay? So maybe try a light pencil first and then you can work on it if you want to. All in that little gap there and then just around this little image here. Like so. Can we see that there? So it's sort of like all ugly already, but we'll sort it out. So then all you're going to do is you're going to take a wet brush, but it's going to be practically dry. So when I say 
like wet it's it's hydrated it's just come out of the water but I'm just going to dip the tip of my brush into some tissue and let the tissue take out the excess water so my brush is still wet but it's not flooded okay so when you touch the tissue it will drink the water out of your brush and then all you're going to do is you're just going to drag that colour out a little bit so circle motions all the way around you see that there can we see so you don't want your brush saturated, it just needs to be a little bit wet. Wet enough to drag it out, but not wet enough to flood it. So get in that crevice there. Can we see already we're getting like a nice shadow around our work, which is making it look a little bit 3D. If you put a bit too much water on, it's okay, go back and just dry your brush a little bit. So you can see already we're casting a shadow around our work. And already it looks like it's dimensional, doesn't it? I hope it does anyway, I can't really see. So don't try and uh, don't try and blend out that that pencil line because that line there now is making it look 3D without you even knowing about it. I'm quickly doing this. You can spend more time with it, drag it out. If you end up with a harsh line like so, just take your brush, dry it off a little bit. And what will happen is you'll get a lovely shadow around your work, all the way around. And then when it dries, it dries back lighter, remember? So don't put yourself under pressure. It dries back way, way lighter. And if you get a harsh line that you don't actually like, all you need to do is just get your brush and go into your work and circle motion it out, like so. So there we go. I'll just turn this around and you'll be able to hopefully see the results. we see how we've got a shadow around our work now I'll just dry that one off but it does look 3d it does look a little bit like we fussy cut it doesn't it so question question is it a three or a four it, I always use a four it's my go-to brush but if you do prefer a three you can use a three but I do use a four unless you're doing fine art botanicals anything less than a four but for general everyday painting like now I always use a four and I use a four right up to normally about a ten or something so let's dry this one off. And already it's practically dried back to nothing. You see that there? There we go, it's practically dried back to nothing. So you can literally go for it see where it takes you if you want it a little bit darker go back around again with the pencil blue the, if you're ever trying to cast a shadow or things like that on your artwork always use a blue a gray or a black they're the most effective colors blue grays and blacks they all have the same undertone you see so they all work alongside other colors they don't clash in a sense <laughs> shirley says she could sit and watch me all day poor you shirley It is good though, isn't it? It is lovely to just enjoy an hour. I think we're, um, am I being pushed? I'm not being pushed for time, I'm, be, I'm okay, which is good because we've still got a bit of a way to go on this demo. <laughs> so let's set that aside. Here I have a piece of vellum. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I've just grabbed the sentiment from this one that we used the other day. And it's this super large one here. So if you got this one brilliant, um, this is the one that I did pop in the sale. If you haven't got this, look for a sentiment that's got two or three, three or four lines. We want something that's quite chunky. Okay, so you're looking for something that's, and I've done lots of stamp sets that I've got these sort of large sentiments on there. So you're looking for something chunky. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this in the centre of this piece of vellum. It's just a thick, it's probably about an inch and a half deep. Okay. And I'm just going to heat emboss the sentiment. Grab my anti-static bag. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to heat it and emboss it in black today. So sticky ink pad for the sentiment. It's really important, guys, that if you are using a black embossing powder, that you use an anti-static bag. They're inexpensive and it makes your work look a lot more professional. Black is a nightmare for going all over where it shouldn't go. You really do need that anti-static bag to make your work look professional. And black's the worst one. So I'm just stamping that down there, make sure I get all those words in there. Hopefully I'll be able to see. Yes, that's fine. So I'll just grab this piece of scrap. So in today's show, I'm showing you that these stamps can be pushed back or brought forward. But what I'm also showing you is that um, you chop them up with your sentiments you've got in your stash and things like that. So here I have a little bit of static at the top here. So I'm just going to use a dry brush. So this is dry brush with no moisture in there. And I'm just going to take away all those flecks. <laughs> give it a blow. If you don't have, oh, I've missed an S there. If you don't have a, a um, black embossing powder, which some of you might not, you might have a clear one, stamp it out in your black ink pad and then quickly throw some clear embossing on it. Because that works too. But you have to be quick getting that clear embossing on because the ink pad dries really quick. So let's heat set this one. The rose one is called the Rose Elements and it's in the sale. If you pop F uh, sorry, it's not in FBL. If you go to the website and down the left hand side right at the bottom, it says club sale. If you are a club member, click in and see what the price is. If you're not a club member, there are still some savings on there for you. So I'm just heat setting this one. So we have a lovely heat embossed sentiment there on our vellum. Again, let's set that aside. Our card is going to come together at some point. You're going to be like, my gosh, how much is going on? So it is quite a... Uh, I wanted it to do it from start to finish because there's no good me saying to you, right, I've done this ahead of time, I've done that ahead of time. Because some people do like to physically watch the step by step. So I have this piece of black cardstock here. Now you're going to need a... For this, if you're wanting to sort of replicate the card that I'm doing, you're going to need a word die. And I've chosen to use Happy because I don't have a, a die like this out of Claire's kit. And it's quite a substantial size Happy, but it is beautiful, is the frame and everything like that. And this is my personal one and I will use it at some point. But I just wanted to use the Happy today. So if you've got a die in your stash that says Happy or Birthday Wishes or something that's quite chunky, it's going to work for this technique. So I'll just get this out of the bag. I'm just going to use the word happy though. I'm not going to use the outline today, just the word happy. I've just got some black cardstock here. So have a look in your stash, see what you've got. I mean, you can buy any of the products that I have used in show, um, as always, but you probably will have a die maybe that can do something similar. So I'm just going to pop the happy down there like so. I'm just going to run this one through my machine, which I haven't used for ages, it feels. Because we've been doing Academy, it's just stamps, isn't it? <laughs> A show all day long. You'd soon end up muting me, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, so if you are using ink, so stamp out in your everyday ink, your black ink, excuse me, as soon as you've stamped it out, grab your clear embossing powder. So I've got the Crystal Clair here, which is the clear one. Stamp it out, throw that on and heat set it, and then you'll have a black heat embossed image. It's a bit of a cheat if you haven't got a, a black embossing powder. So you can see there, we've got the beautiful Happy. Can't see it against my um, black jumper like, but I'll just put this behind. There we go. There we go. So let's get our card put together, finally. 
I'm having too much fun. And to be honest with you, it's very rare I get any time to myself, as you can all imagine. So the times that I do, I absolutely make the most of it, like today, doing my colour swatches and having a bit of time in and amongst the schooling and Lego building and Christmas, sorting Christmas things out. But anyway, it's all good fun, isn't it? nothing to moan about so here we go so first of all we have our lovely picture so let's get this mounted so at home you can pick the colors you're going to mount them onto I've got a piece of purple here because I knew that I was going to be using some purple in my flowers so let's get this glued onto this piece of purple so I'm just using some glue here if you have tape pens and things like that also use them make it extra um, durable that's if this is going to work it doesn't look like it oh there we go it's blocked hopefully it'll work now no is it not going to work let's just swap it out for another one when are the colored cards coming oh as soon as i know you will know super super soon They've taken me ages to work on, um, so I managed to find a nice card, which I felt were a really good quality, and then unfortunately the manufacturer then did the envelopes and the envelopes were poor quality, so it was like such a shame that the cards were amazing and the envelopes were not so good. Um, it, as you all know, we like to do techniques on envelopes and they were just not of a good quality at all. So it was back to the drawing board. I found another manufacturer and again, his envelopes were amazing, but then the cardstock was not the best. So it's taken some time. Um, Coloured envelopes are just something that the industry does not like doing for some reason. Um, they do cost a little bit more money, but I think I'd pay that extra bit of money to have a matching coordinating envelope, would you? I just think it looks smarter. I'd pay it all day long if I'm honest, but that's just me. So there we go. So we've got that piece on there and then I have a piece of black. But before we put this on here, we need to adhere this. So I'm going to wrap this around. Before I do that though, we need to get our lovely word. Where's our word gone? There we go. So chopping it up with your dies and your words, what we're going to do, we're going to wrap this around our work and we're going to pop the word happy on top. So we have happy as in it's your birthday. So I would say, let's just see, let's, shall we go higher? Let's go higher. And this is what I was saying about pushing this, the image into the background and bringing the focal point, the sentiment. It is a lovely sentiment. So let's make that the focal point for a change. I'm just trying to get this to a deer. So let's have a look. Uh, where are the sale items? So the sale items are down the left-hand side of our website. You need to go to Club Sale. Um, and it's just at the bottom. It's the bottom one on there for you. So go and have a look. You, if you do want to become a club member to get the more, even more reduced prices, um, if, you'd if you put the um, club membership in your basket and do that first, we will activate it for you. And then... Um, you can then get the club price on the product. So I'm just popping some tape behind here and I'm just going to wrap this vellum around. I'm going to do it really tight because I want it to be flat to the image. Hopefully that's straight. There we go. Can we see that there? So it's nice and flat on our image. Now, if you don't like it wrapped around the purple, you can just do it around here. I like the fact that it's wrapped around the purple. I just like the colour to come through, but it is personal preference on that one. And then this one, I'm just going to pop a bit of glue onto something rather than back of my hand because I made my hand sore last time. going to dip the happy into the to the glue there move that out of the way I'm just going to pop the happy at the top in the center best I can like so I'm now going to adhere this onto some black with some glue 
just because I really do want it to be stuck together. This one's now running out. Oh, there we go. So, Elaine, yeah, we, if you have emailed a sweet app, we are getting through them all. Uh, it's just unfortunate at this moment in time, there is only us in the building. We don't have the regular staff that do help us out with all of those things. But we are getting through them all, sweetheart. And as soon as we come across it, we will answer it as straight as we can, as soon as we can. Um, Tim has already said today that we are taking the laptop, laptop home this evening um, because the emails are sort of building up again. So they probably, probably will get either seen this evening or tomorrow. We're doing our best. So there we go. And then... You can see how amazing this card looks, doesn't it? And now the focal point is actually the, um, excuse me, I'm just going to grab my pads. The focal point is actually the, the, the die and not, the die and the words and not the stamp. But equally, you know, if you want to do your image lovely and bright, you can do that too, can't you? And I have a top folding note card here. Make sure it is the right way. And I'm just going to pop this into the centre of this card here. Like so. And then just to finish, I'm just going to, I will sparkle and gem it up for the picture. But there we go. Just a card from start to finish today, ladies and gents. Something a little bit different. And it is different today because we've used stamps and we've used dies and we've used our lovely new stamp. Happy, yep, you could actually cut it in black and purple and maybe ca cast a shadow, that would look pretty, wouldn't it? So, yep, three, there's three layers on that colour in there. Um, but I still did it in like 20 minutes, didn't I? It's not taking me hours and hours and hours. We haven't got hours and hours and hours to colour pictures. Us. I certainly haven't anyway. So, there we go. That's the lovely stamp we're working on. We're working on it again tomorrow. We'll do something different with it tomorrow. We might do the, f the um, real fussy one tomorrow. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely afternoon. We will be working through our emails, so please don't try not to get stressed about it. We're not ignoring you. They will get dealt with. And um, don't forget I'm on TV on Thursday. So I would say to you, let's have a look quickly. There is some question. Oh, it's all, everybody just saying thank you. So thank you from me to you and you to me, hey? So whatever you're doing, have a lovely evening and I will catch you all tomorrow at 3pm using this fabulous stamp. See you all later everyone, bye!